O-Chain. We've ridden it, now let's service it. So, all apart, relatively easy to take apart. This one you can see has definitely had some use. I think it went to uh, Trans Madeira on Steve's bike. So Steve, you can thank me for servicing your O-Chain. Let's go clean it, come back, put it all back together. And I'll show you the process to put it together because it is quite fiddly. Unless you follow the exact process, basically it doesn't go together. So. so we've cleaned the majority of it. There's still some bits I need to polish up, but a lot of it is actually fully replaceable in the service kit, which we're going to fit. We've got a new gasket there and then a little do you remember past the parcel as a kid you used to get a little present it's a bit like that now i don't want to tip it out because it's going to go everywhere so whoa <laughs> it's lots, lots of stuff. so we've got nice shiny new bits this little bit here is a little spring carrier it's got these little curved springs which are quite cool actually that gives your your road chain itself uh, return springs basically so it pushes up against the little um, elastomers and then returns back into place with these with these rebound springs. So that's the springs in the carrier. That's job one. Um, I've used a liberal amount of grease there, but I'm using PT's suspension grease. That's absolutely perfect for the job. You don't want anything too thick because you don't want to restrict how fast the O-chain comes back on its return. Step two. We've got a little bushing ring, little glide ring. We just need to pop that on the spring carrier, uh, like so, in there. And then we need to flip it 180 and put it into the back plate. And you can actually see again, laser etched here, there's a little guide that says that's where the elastomer goes. And there's a correlating arrow on the spring carrier. So you need to match them up. Hang on, let me do that again. I'm actually struggling with this bit. Damn it. Yeah. I've done it. Lessons learned. You need to push the ball and springs all the way home against these tiny arrows here. I guess that's what the arrows are depicting. <laughs> but again, we could have read the instructions, but we're learning as we go. Next up, we've got these little tiny uh, plastic bushes that the, the inner carrier runs on uh, for the uh, rotational and lateral movement, um, irrespective of the glide rings, which are these bits. Um, so a bit of grease on them, and then you load them in vertically once this part's in. Okay, that's those in. Next up, we've got the adjuster assembly. So this is essentially like a little, a little worm gear. We need to fit this. This is what preloads the elastomers and gives you varying degrees of uh, float uh, in the system. So that's our pin in there. Cool. So there's a little black ball and you can see laser etch just there. It says black ball. So we're going to chuck that in here. And that little black ball is like that adds all the tension to the system and like centralizes everything. And then we need to fit our worm gear. There's already plenty of grease on there. I recommend putting it in about a 11 o'clock position, if you looked at the central tooth. So not quite 12 o'clock, because you might run out of gears, but 11 o'clock gives you uh, enough uh, of the worm gear for it to push this system this way. There. So pins next, and then gasket on, and then the second pin. 
because it makes it slightly easier. Just pop the gasket into place, that's all nice, and then the second pin. There. That's all nice and in place. And then we need to start putting the elastomers in. There's actually a, a seat in the uh, inner casing that they sit in and it's the exact shape of the elastomer. If you put them in upside down, it doesn't work. So you can see that they're, they are shaped in a, is that a trapezium? It's like a square with a smaller bit at the bottom, a triangle and a square at the same time. <laughs> What's it called? Is it a trapezium? Anyway, they're, yeah, they're that shape. So next up is the glide ring. I'm just gonna push it in so it's definitely home. So, how's it work? This central piece is attached to your crank. That's the input into the system. The output is then into your chain ring. And as you pedal, you drive this center ring up against the elastomers on these, these little flanges here. So they push up against the elastomers and then that pressure drives your chain ring. But whenever you take the pressure off, this central piece snaps back against the springs. So the springs pull it back. And that is the uh, action that is required to get rid of the pedal kickback in your bike. To adjust it, you simply turn this little worm gear adjuster here and that advances or retards this whole system here so it pushes this gear this way and restricts the movement by this distance here and that's it super simple really but very well made theory last but not least we've got the adjuster now the worm gear was all the way left so we need to put the adjuster back on in a position where the arrow is pointing towards the 12. Now we can lock that. So I now know when I unlock it and turn the two and a half mil, that's gonna move it. It's gonna preload that ball and restrict the movement. So then we'll go down to four degrees. But essentially, that's it, serviced, done. I reckon you can get that down to probably 20 minutes. Um, and you shouldn't have to do it that often. It does depend what sort of conditions you ride in. But there we go, O-chain service done. The only thing with it is, it's a bit like, imagine buckaroo, but greasy. Imagine, greasy buckaroo, that's what this is.